Commander Cockings and Captain Foley here today again for another Trek Yards mission briefing. The more relaxed discussion show where we take a look at a ship from Star Trek Universe, discuss, theorize, and get audience feedback to help us with a future Trek Yards episode. So this week we have the Romulan Dideridex, a much asked for ship, if I do say so myself. Uh, there's one right there. The Dideridex was the primary Romulan warship first seen in 2364. And even if you didn't know the name of the ship, you know which one we're talking about. That is the massive Romulan ship designed by Andrew Probert for the first season of TNG. At a length of 1,341 metres, wow, compared to the Enterprise D's 642 metres and the E's 685, this is a huge ship. And by that, we actually mean one of the biggest ships in Trek. Although it is worth pointing out that despite its size, they may actually have less offensive capabilities than you might imagine. In the Voyager episode, Message in a Bottle, three Dideridex class ships went to rendezvous with the captured USS Prometheus. A Federation task force, which consisted of one Akira and two Defiant class ships, engaged them. And with no apparent larger plan, it looks like those captains thought that their three ships were going to be a match for the three Dideridex Romulan ships. The Prometheus was then able to destroy one of them after its multi-vector assault mode and combined assault with three sections. So its size may be partially for show. Anyway, time to begin the show. Let's start with that particular encounter. What do you think, Commander? Well, uh, that takes us on to the first picture, or the next picture anyway. Um, you know, Defiance are pretty small. The Derelict is pretty huge. Um, uh, yeah, seems strange that they'd be able to completely destroy or be, I don't know. I don't know, Stuart, what do you think? I don't know, because it's always thrown me that the Romulan ships, we never see a plasma torpedo again. I mean, that's a very effective weapon. It's got a lot of punch to it. And you would think a ship this size would have those, but even on the orthos and stuff that we've looked at, I don't see plasma torpedo turrets or anything. So I don't know if that was a failed technology. I don't know. Well, I, I think what we can deduce is that they moved away from that into just hardcore disruptors and torpedoes, or the producers didn't want to show an expensive visual effect because you know, plasma, difficult. But from what we see, the Dideridex isn't the, the, the mighty powerhouse that we well, you'd think it would be. And I know we do, I know Defiance are meant to be you know these the, the strong punch of a ship, but as with all ships, it's about offense and defense. You need to have strong shields to be able to last a few shots. I mean, these plasma torpedoes from a ship you know that is ginormous that should be able to almost rip through the the hull of a, of a Defiant, you know the shields of a Defiant because it's just got that much power up. It doesn't matter if they have a quantum it's got pulse phases. There's a point when just shields can't cope. So to think that these three ships could win. That must say something about the Derridex, that maybe it's, like I say, just for show, maybe it's just... Or it could be that those Federation guys, just those were the only ships available, so they had no choice but to take them on. Yeah, so this picture, I mean, this is the battle, and it's pretty much head-on, so all the forward weapons are being fired, I'm sure, you know, if this battle went on longer. That's some ballsy strategy to do by the Federation, and it's not like they are going to quickly swoop in, save the Prometheus and run away. They have no idea what the situation is, so they were pretty... Must be pretty sure they can survive at least a while. Yeah, um, it doesn't seem like there is any strategic plan here. It's just we need to get our ship back. So let's just jump into the fray. All right, so let's move on to the next photo. Oh, look at that. Derridex isn't doing so well. <laughs> no, now we know that Prometheus is a really strong ship. We know that. But still. <laughs> well, now it's six on three, technically. <laughs> so. I don't know. Uh, you take out one of the one ship and the other ones run. Eh. So yeah, it does seem like the Romulan sh the fleet is probably aging, and I think the Romulans probably realized this about this time or during the Dominion conflict at least. Hey, that's why they sent three to fight the Prometheus or capture the Prometheus. Yeah. Then everything else shows up. Anyway, so uh, this is the first picture. Now this is an interesting one. Um, we sort of know the rough size of the ship, but here it says there might either be two different sizes or. Is mm -hmm. that confusion about the size? But either one, that's the D. The D is huge. The D was meant to be huge, designed to be. These ships are much bigger. <laughs> yeah. Well, when the first when the ship was first seen on screen, nobody knew the size. Um, yeah. With especially with the angles that they used, it looked like the Enterprise could fly right through it. So there was confusion at first, and I think this picture kind of was the first speculative uh, indication of what those sizes might be. So. Yeah, I always got the impression it was the 1200 that you could park the Enterprise D inside it. That was always my, you know, mm -hmm. feel, so. Yeah. Well, what, and you know, that's a big empty space in there. I mean, you compact that ship into one, it's probably about the size of the Galaxy class anyway. 
just they spread it out kind of thing. So, all right. So the next picture is during the Dominion War. We see the Cardassians and the Romulans going all out with their <laughs> weapons by the looks of it. So, I mean, pretty impressive looking fleet, to be honest. Yeah, you definitely would not want to face that. And that's a lot of power because the Galores are pretty powerful too. So that is a lot of firepower being sent out. And that's, it's glad we, I'm glad we went to the torpedoes as well. So we know they have them. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad we got the, the Romulans in the fight. It's a fake. Sorry, I had to. That's one of my favorite, epi one of the best Star Trek episodes ever in the Pale Moonlight. It is pretty great. But I mean, you say that, but it's not fake that all these ships got annihilated. So. Lives. <laughs> yeah, so the next picture is Orthos. Uh, all the good angles, so you really get a sense of it. And it has some stats, which might be fan extrapolated. We don't know, but that's why we had to discuss. A battleship. Okay, not just a heavy cruiser. Battleship. <laughs> 68 class 21 disruptor cannons. 68? I don't know, man. <laughs> that doesn't seem legit. <laughs> and we only ever seen fired two. <laughs> Yeah, and 12 <laughs> photon torpedo tubes. Where Jesus. are all these tubes? Oh, come on. It's a big ship. They can hide them. Come on. That's I know. But there, are, there are more official orthos coming up later where we actually see they point to where the tubes are. And yeah. that mm. I mean, I mean, We know the Scimitar was a meaty ship, but this really... This this says they're trying to make this sort of a powerful ship too. I think this yeah, probably an extrapolation. But then again, I mean, you want to have a ship that's this big, armed, not necessarily to the teeth, but in terms of defensive arc, I mean, how much more space do you physically have to defend? I mean, if I was them, I would put disruptors in the internal space, because can you imagine that? A ship flies in, oh dear, <laughs> you can't attack it. I've so always the, thought that, yeah. Yeah, they must be plastered around the whole ship, so you'd need a lot of disruptors, even if they're lower yield. Yeah, and we see the crew at 1,500 troops and officers, so sort of D-ish, but troops. So you can imagine, like, a big garrison, possibly, which is... That doesn't sound fun. Yeah, well... And the Romulans are more Spartan with their space. They don't need all the extravagancies of the galaxy. Spartan question, with so. their space. I know, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I had to. Uh, yeah, and uh, plus two CM high density armor. Nice. We always like the plus two. I mean, you can't. Or plus 11. Whichever. You can't, you can't go better than that, can you? No. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the next picture. Uh, this is the, the Daredex. It's spelt differently than it officially should be. Um, <laughs> But this is from FASA, actually. So okay. this is a size comparison chart with all the other uh, major ships. They were appropriate, is, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Actually, I have, ironically enough, I have the my and my little yeah. Marauder there. And the Marauder is right underneath the, uh, the Romulan in that picture. So it's actually, this is from my adversary set. And these are to scale of each other, so. Yeah, so one interesting thing about this photo is that it's sort of the four major TNG races. You've got the Klingon, Vorchai, Neva, the Cardassian Galore, the Romulan, the Derodex, and then the Ferengi Marauder. These are the major races of TNG. And that Romulan ship blows them out of the water. So was that... I mean, what do you think? So you're a Romulan uh, designer, and you know, you're know TMP era maybe, and you think, oh, let's build a new class of ship. Why go that huge? Because this is... You can probably fit a Neva. Good piloting inside the... Uh, Mm. Well, maybe just about. I mean, why would you go this large compared to other ships of the time? Well, that's kind of what I was uh, I mentioned earlier was that we can. There's a lot of open space in there, and to actually close that in and make it like a solid strip ship structure, like the Galaxy or the Sovereign, I think you'd have pretty much the same size. They've just spaced it out a lot to make it look more imposing. I think. What do you think that was the main reason then for opposing factor for? Dramatic effect. I mean, these are these are guys that developed cloaking technology. I can't imagine. And oh shit, is really necessarily their 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 repartee. Um, well, even with the TOS bird of prey or warbird that we saw, the front uh, front is very narrow, and then which makes it harder to hit, probably easier to cloak. So breaking the ship up like this, where it's a lot of open space, same kind of deal. It might be. It might enhance their cloaking abilities. It might do something along those that's, lines. So. That's an interesting point, actually. Yeah, maybe it helps disperse the cloaking field because you don't... Yeah, maybe. That's an interesting idea. Um, but, I mean, it, it just points out, you know, if there was ever wars, you know, full-on wars versus the you know, Alpha Quadrant versus Alpha Quadrant, you know, five Galores versus one to Derodex, you'd still think the Derodex could win just because of the pure scale. Um, although the Nevach, I mean, I think, I think that... 
I think I would love to see a fight between those two because that is the mm. pride of the Klingon Armada. That'd be interesting to see. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the next one is another top side and uh, front, <laughs> and this is. Uh, did you say faster again? Yeah, this is the same faster book. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I love how the Romulans have the bird motif. And there are the wing markings that are very distinctive on the, the Derodex. Now, you never really see them highlighted. There's a little bit of color in there. When I built my model, mm. I really made them prominent. Wow. And I think it's a really cool look. So, I mean, I, I, I love that. I love that, you know, when as a model builder, you can kind of make it the way you want it. And I think with TOS, they really, the bird was really a, very noticeable. Yeah. And, um, I think they should have stayed with that to kind of mask it. I, I don't know. I don't know if I really like that approach. Well, I like your one. It's certainly more aggressive. It certainly gives it that extra dimension, I think. But, yeah, certainly from this top view, those wing motif is clearly visible. I mean, this is a distinct... Let's give it... Well, I mean, I mean, you can see the, the Romulan symbol, you know, at the top right there. I mean, that is... Mm -hmm. They try to add that aesthetic, and it, it adds a certain elegance, I think. Um, and okay. even if it's just arm or whatever, it... Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, absolutely. And I do love some of the details. Uh, I mean, if you look at the the the, uh, the nose of the bridge section, I mean that you know, the the eye is there as a beak. I mean that is some serious detailing. I'd love to see the designer, the Roman designer, say, "Ah, we love the bird. Let's put the beak and the eye." And they're like, "Jerry, come on, it, it it's a spaceship. <laughs> we don't <laughs> we don't need it. Come on." But then he wanted to earn his paycheck. It was fine. <laughs> yes, it was. It was, it was it was an order that was sent down from the Emperor, you know, make no, a bird. Uh, and a pro, count, a pro, count, pro console, yeah. So moving to the next picture, and this is, like I said, this talks about the scale. Because the way they angle these shots, it's hard to determine what the size of the ship actually was. And I don't even know if they really had it in their minds what the size was when I'm, they... I'm sure Andrew had some idea. I'm sure that was... Because you I mean, this scale shot, yes, it doesn't look... You can't necessarily tell, but you know it's bigger. I mean, you still get this overriding sense of ooh. So I'm sure Andrew had an idea, but yeah. And this is from the original episode they were introduced. This mm -hmm. is the first shot where D. Cloatson comes in and this must have been I mean, do you remember watching this when you were you know, watching it live? What was the what was the feeling when, when you saw it for the first time? I thought the Enterprise was going to be destroyed <laughs> because it's just so tiny. And the, we know that the Galaxy class is a huge ship. Especially compared to the you know, the TOS and the movie version of Enterprise. So to see this ship decloak and be that huge on screen, it was just like, oh my god, how big is this thing? How many people are on board? I remember as a kid thinking how many people were on board. That was my big thing that I was stuck on. So I wonder if our fans ever done a version which has the internal space filled in with details and everything. I'd love to see like a fully, you know, solid version. If that was all interior decks in there, that thing would be huge. The crew would be like ten thousand. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or you, I mean, you could literally there'd be a it'd be a flying military base, but not just a base. I mean, you, if you could, you know, imagine five thousand armed boarding personnel in that. You could have an entire training complex in the middle, no problem. That would be wow. Or like a carrier full of fighters. You could have fighter decks Ooh, in there. That, that would, would be amazing. Be, yeah. Ouch. <laughs> uh, so the next photo. Um... Yeah, I found this one and I thought it was interesting. <laughs> I don't know if this is like a Tal Shiar special operations version. Or a Cardassian version. <laughs> a captured Cardassian one, maybe. I don't know. That's a good question. I just I thought it was very a neat picture and I thought I'd include it here. So It doesn't work as well. No. I think not. we're biased because we know the reality of what it was, but it doesn't work as well. It doesn't have the same... Like green has a venomous sense to it, and it, it gives it that extra point. This just feels more puke. <laughs> yeah, like puke. baby yeah. puke. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving right along to the next picture. Ah, this is a great one. Yes, um, we get to see some interior details. Uh, look at there's three impulse engines stacked at the back there, which there's really, oh. no, there's really no openings for or anything. So, well, it's that efficient, maybe. That's very interesting. Yeah. So 82 decks, wow, um, and this one says 10 disruptors, which sounds a lot more likely. Um, yeah, absolutely. And a lot of shuttle bays, well, a big shuttle bay anyway at the back. Now I uh, see a little bit of a discrepancy at the front there. It says navigational deflector, and that's mm. like right here. Yeah, 
And I think in one of the later pictures that we see, it's actually a weapon. Yeah, it's uh, a disruptor. We've seen that before. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm. Grain of salt, guys. But it's interesting. When you actually... So I don't know how many of you actually got the actual physical model. Um, hopefully all of you, because you know, we're Star Trek fans. But <laughs> this shuttle boat is three decks. And it's going to be terrible because it's not a big model. But if you look at the... This, the uh, wow, it's terrible. Stuart, bring all yours up too. There's a little detail on the back. Um, no, on the actual... There's a little sort of extra section there, which feels like it could lift up. Yeah. I mean, if, oh, you, this? if you do it to the side a little bit, there's just an extra... Well, okay, on well, my one, because mine's very detailed. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, it has. It looks like it could almost be a section that opens up and comes out. Like I, I can believe that's shuttle bay. That works perfectly well for me. Um, yeah. And there's also a shuttle bay in the interior. Look underneath the warp nacelles. That that entire line is almost a shuttle bay. Wow. Well, that makes sense because there's so much detail in there. In there. Wow. That this could all be platforms that raise up. Um, another thing I wanted to point out too, when I was painting this, I made these gold. I, I imagine these to be like escape pods. Oh, nice. That would pop out. There's on the top and the bottom. That makes a lot of sense. So, just a detail I'd like to point out. Yeah, but no, this is this is this is really interesting. I like. It looks it looks like they've because I mean whenever we see Federation ships, it's really quite a tightly packed thing, especially like you know the Orbeth and some things we just just looked at, which is we've got to fit you know warp core, warp engines, de uh, all these things in one thing. Whereas this, they've got the space, so straight away my eye sees you know okay the front deflector, the top. Um, uh, main engineering and then the, and you know all these big sections, but then the rest of it is just lines of decks. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of space with just rooms, you know, because they can afford to space out. And that's what else is in here. But we never saw it enough to really get a sense. Is it because it says a heavy cruiser and it says a battleship? Is it a warship? Because the Romans don't go to war, or is it just their equivalent of their primary? Is it can't do science, can't do engineering? Like wh what is in the rest of this sp uh, space? Well, I don't know. I've, I've noticed two interesting things, though, as you were speaking. If you notice, um, the third down says Disruptors 10, right? Yeah. And it points to a red dot. Now, all those red dots would be Disruptors, which means there's a Disruptor in the eye. There's a Disruptor up top. Mm. There's one in the back. This circle in the back is a Disruptor. Oh, okay. And these points huh. here, I think, are all Disruptor points. Oh. See that them? Makes all those little points that stick out. There's also one right here in the middle, right there. Nice. Yeah. That um, works really well, yeah. So that's the first thing. The second thing I noticed was two under disruptors. It says separation planes. I just so saw this, that as well. This yeah. thing separates right here. So I didn't know this thing separated. So this, yeah. yeah. That's really cool, actually, that we noticed that. I d I'd never even suspected that this thing would separate, but that's really neat. Although it, it's, mo it's certainly more of a life pod as opposed to something feasible because there's impulse engines we can see them but it's not mm. warp capable but then again neither is the uh, enterprise saucer so i mean it doesn't need to be warp capable but yeah that's good picture good picture <laughs> so the next one um this is interesting because this really puts into perspective mm. with the other romulan ships although we see three sort of non-canon ships we see the valdor the d7 and the vas hatham okay cool um <laughs> and well there really isn't a evolution of scale there isn't no, does doesn't doesn't work. Although I guess they've tried to make it sort of work with these side cannon stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. I mean, it is a beast, and this D seven, which is a big ship, used to be anyway, is smaller than than the warp nacelle. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, but it does show you how much they really streamline for the Valdor, <laughs> the <Yeah>. next generation. <laughs> and the 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 Mogai or Norexan or whatever I think is the Valdor, obviously. Yep. Um, it's interesting, actually, the size difference between TOS and uh, this one. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I think it's really cool, though, that uh, they included the D7 Romulan version hmm. with the, hmm. the blue markings on it there. But Yeah, but it, it, does, it does show that they obviously took this leap. They decided, nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, well, uh, yeah, the Norixon's about the same size as Enterprise E, so they pushed forward and then went back to about the same conceptual scale as the other ships at the time. So We need to put the, the Terror Bird, or Trekyard's original ship in there somewhere. That'd be kind of cool to see. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the next picture uh, is a front view of the Dideridex. And there we have, there, there is where it shows that this middle part right here is not a deflector, but indeed a disruptor cannon. A class 11 disruptor cannon. Mm. 
so yeah most impressive and it does it does look i mean it's, it's a fat ship it is but it still keeps an elegance a sleekness that it looks pretty opposing you know those lines are really well done lines so well done andrew didn't make a it still looks pretty damn good so i size. just noticed something else there if you look, notice down here I wonder if those are shuttle bay. Those would be shuttle bay doors. Because remember that one whole deck yes. underneath here was shuttles. Oh. Very interesting. And I've never noticed that before. And you, you painted it, Stuart. You didn't even realize. Well, as I was painting, I was looking at the details, going, what, wonder what that could be. And, you know, I had stuff in my mind. But now that we're actually talking about it, it all makes sense and it's coming together. <laughs> awesome job, Andrew. So the next one, I mean, this is an amazing um, render. I mean, look Fine. at this. This is this is excellent. Uh, I guess four Dominion bug ships versus two Dederics, and the Dederics are doing pretty well. <laughs> mm, and if you look at this, those windows, I mean, as we've talked to with the designers, the windows give a real sense of scale, but look at the windows on the Dederics, how small they are. These ships look way bigger than the ones we've been talking about. Now that's interesting. Does that look like 82 decks to you? Oh, that looks like a lot more than 82 decks. That looks like more to me as well. Hmm. Yes, and then we we've heard that from many designers, Doug Drexler included, that but the windows the windows is, make the scale. But this is a fan version, whereas you know, in my version, uh, you can sort of see all well, the white portions. Those are also windows, yeah. and that I can see a bit closer. This and might mine, just be a little bit more. Mine had no window markings. I had to make my windows myself, <laughs> but yeah, a little bit more realistic than what we see there, I think. And again, we see the, the this fan has obviously said yes, and no, that front port is a disruptor, as we see in the show, as opposed to the other fan drawings. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and even... This this doesn't really represent the scale properly, but they look manoeuvrable and they look powerful. This is, this is a great photo, so, yeah. All right, so the next one I really like, and I thought I should include, because it shows the, the Romulan kind of Elkar's aesthetic, which is very cool and sleek looking. One it's different, of my, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, I like it better than the Klingons Aww. and uh, a lot of the other races. But eh, what can I say? I just I, I love the colors, the color palette they use. It's just yeah. awesome. And and in this version, obviously, uh, again, this is could be fans, could be a real one. We don't know. But there's a lot more detail in the L cars in terms of the ship. There's a lot more stuff happening. Um, but it's not high enough res for us to see. We'd love to see a full version. If anyone has a a, a real a real L cars from the show, you know, send that over. We'd love to see one. But you know. Um, well, I've got to point out, not this is about this is not about the L cars of the week, but what information are you really getting from this? I mean, there's lots of just boxes that are either lit or not. What, what on earth do they mean? I don't know. It doesn't seem uh. as efficient. No offense, Stuart. I know you like it. <laughs> no offense taken. It's alright. And the next one. This is a really nice, a really nice photo. This is um, from Star Trek Online, um, which is the online video game. You know, the the World of Warcraft of Star Trek, as it were. Uh, and this is, you know, their high resolution image. This is a really great way of seeing what the modern day official model would be, because this is, you know, licensed by by CBS to represent it. So they also got the original um, mm. specs and stuff, and lots of things we see. But they've actually got the yellow hatches on the top, like yours has. Ah, so I was correct in painting mine gold. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so they can actually be shuttle, uh, not shuttle, uh, uh, skate pods, which really works. Um, and I mean, you can. I mean, the detail really is nice on this. I love lots of the little things. Things I don't think are on. Yeah, mine, mine's slightly different with the uh, the top part. Mine, mm -hmm. it's a much more uh, sleek bit, whereas this one has those bumps. So I think this is obviously the the push forward as it is twenty four and nine as opposed to twenty three. Uh, whatever. Mm. So, and and here I have to point out too the windows for scale. That's much more like eighty four decks. Yeah, it does feel more. Yeah, eighty five decks, whatever it was. Um, yeah, but I love the detailing in this. Like... I haven't played Star Trek Online. Do I've not played the Romulan, uh, the Romulan faction. I probably should, but I love the Feds. So someday, someday. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Feds are the way to go. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next picture. This is another great beauty shot. We got three ships in orbit. Um, and quite an imposing task force. I mean, this is kind of like what maybe this is right before they went to capture the Prometheus or to help <laughs> the Prometheus thing. <laughs> um, so, which one's the unlucky one that got blown up? Oh dear. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I don't know, man. But that again, I'm pointing out the windows. Here we go with smaller windows again. It almost yeah. seems too crowded and too looks like huge. an ant. They look like ant windows. The other one a bit more realistic. Although, although I don't know about you, but but this first one, this looks slim down, it looks thinner, it looks pushed down, there isn't as much... Maybe it's just because we're not seeing that top bump, but that looks fatter to me than mm. this one. This looks pushed down a bit. Yeah, it does look like they kind of sandwiched it a little bit to make it flatter. And I sort of like it, it does look... it looks like a different sort of ship. 
it has the same feel, but I think it, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the next picture, this is actually the studio model used for the the show, which is interesting, and it shows how different it can look in different lighting. You know, the, the obviously the top, the top right one that's under proper studio lighting, and the other ones are not, and it really shows you what professionals do with proper proper uh, kit. And yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of details, a lot of lot of work went into it, and all those all those lights. You know, they're all, they're all LEDs and stuff, aren't they? So, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, and I, I love the way that this looks different under different lighting. Um, I kind of like the lower left one, personally. I have a darker color. Um, and I kind of like how the uh, how, how darker gray the top right looks. Less green. I kind of think that looks looks more underground. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and when I did my model, I went with a metallic green, which mm. I thought really made the made the Romulan ship pop, so... Yeah. Cool. Alright, so we're back to this shot from uh, the actual, an actual episode of TNG, and uh, it's a, like this, this is one of, this is a great ship. It really is, and it's a fan favorite. We've, we've had it requested quite a few times. Yeah. Although it's got a really bright spotlight on that one. I don't know what that is all about. <laughs> it's okay, the windows look better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great, it's a great ship. I really look forward to talking to Andrew about it because we have obviously Andrew Probert who designed it with us on Trek Yards regularly. So look forward to seeing his design process and what he thinks, and then do a, you know, another episode trying to get all those facts as we always do here on Trek Yards. Um, any last thoughts on this ship? Uh, well, one just popped in my head, which is kind of silly. But looking at the top of this uh, ship here, it looks like its hair is nicely combed backwards. Its feathers are nicely. Uh, it's just it, this really makes the eye pop and the hair. It makes it look all stylish, just like me. I'm done now. And that's it for a rather large episode of Trek Yards mission briefing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please obviously like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out our weekly releases at trekyards.com, and join us on Trek Yards Facebook page, where ship lovers love to love ships. I think that works. <laughs> Anyway, if you have a ship you'd like to see next time, leave a comment below. So until next time, guys, see ya.